My name is Othel Hawthorne Lakey, and I'm a bishop in retirement of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. Over the past few weeks, the College of Bishops has promoted a call to action for this presidential election. We have urged members of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church to register, to vote, and to get others to the polls. The reason for this unusual step is clear. It is, is clear. As we see it, this election is not, is really unlike any in the history of this nation. It is not the usual choice between differing political points of view or competing philosophies of government of which a free people must choose. And we realize and we thank God that in varying degrees, most of these points of view and these philosophies of government are shared by members of our beloved Zion. We have participated in all of the political parties and activities. One historical anecdote, for example, is a CME preacher in the 1880s who said that he would ra he, he prayed more for, you just saw him, uh, Chester A. Arthur, the Republican, to be president more than he prayed for sinners to be saved. And then on the other hand, some of us might remember Hillary Clinton uh, in the 1890s coming to one of our CME gatherings. And she came in support of her Democratic candidate for president, Bill Clinton. And Hillary told us of her Methodist background and said that she had studied the history of the CME church and congratulated us on our proud history. So you see, my brothers and sisters, we have participated in all phases of the political uh, drama. However, however, the decision of 2020, we firmly believe, is qualitatively different, different from these others. For us, it is more than a simple political choice. It is rather a decision about the soul of this nation. That soul expressed in the Declaration of Independence is the self-evident truth that all persons are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And not only that, but as you know, it is... Uh, this, this soul of America is embodied in the inscription on the Statue of Liberty. You remember what that Statue of, of Liberty reads, do you not? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Now, if this indeed is the soul of this nation, in this election, that soul hangs in the balance. America's choice then is not simply between Donald J. Trump and Joseph R. Biden Jr. It transcends personalities as radically different as they may be. Or again, it is not, it is not between Republicans and Democrats. You see, the soul of the nation is far bigger than political platforms and party labels. Neither is it between what we call red states and blue states. For you see, preserving the soul of America crosses over all of our artificial boundaries and barriers. In many respects, this choice, which thankfully millions of us have already made and millions more will make tomorrow, is similar to the choice the children of Israel had to make as they prepared 
to enter the promised land. Their leader, Joshua, put it before them in clear and precise terms. Choose this day whom you will serve, the gods of your ancestors before the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Consider a relentless pandemic, COVID-19, rages throughout the world. Nine million Americans have been infected and 230,000 are dead. Consider images of a white policeman with his knee on the neck of George Floyd for eight minutes and 46 seconds as he whispered with his dying breath, I can't breathe. That image still lingers in our minds. Consider health care for millions hanging in the balance while our Department of Justice is now in court trying to take it away. Consider 546 immigrant children having been separated from their parents never to see them again. We cannot but say the challenge of Joshua echoes down the corridors of history. They echo loud and clear. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Our choice is this, life and death, good and evil, truth and lies, right and wrong, justice and injustice, freedom and bondage, decency and indecency, equality and racism, character and degradation, light and darkness. Those are our choices. And so, my brothers and sisters, as bishops of the church, we like Joshua, we will not try to dictate your choice. We only seek to remind you of what your choice really is. Your choice will determine whether the soul of this great nation will live or whether that soul will die. But we, like Joshua, will give you our resolve. And our, our resolve is this, as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We say for us and our house, we will serve the Lord, even Jesus Christ, who said, come, all, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. He said, you have to feed the hungry take care of the poor, visit those in prison, take care of the homeless. Inasmuch as you've done it to the least of these, my children, you've done it unto me. The choice for the soul of America is up to you. Make the right choice. Thank you. God bless you.